How can you change your SharePoint sites that look like this to look something a little like this? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a way to add change the look themes to your SharePoint sites using something called the Fluent UI. Now, the good thing is this is quite straightforward that any user can design the color uh, theme with many variations you'll need with hyperlinks, buttons, controls, and etc. etc. If you're new to the change the look, I will introduce this uh, as a feature in SharePoint that provides uh, a few out of the box color schemes that owners can apply to their sites. So this is a great way to make um, one or two business branded color schemes available to your site owners. So to create the themes, we'll use the Microsoft Fluent User Interface or UI Designer, which is a website that Microsoft provides uh, where you can create your site color schemes. We'll then apply that scheme to SharePoint Online and I will use PowerShell because it is the simplest method. And that is the tiny catch. Anyone can create the color scheme, but it requires a SharePoint admin account to apply it. Now this can be applied in many ways, but the fastest way is to do it through PowerShell. And the great thing is I've provided a link to the code that either you or your admin team can use to apply the theme. It is very easy to use and it will not require anything to be installed or configured if you're using Windows 10. So let's start with the change the look feature. So in your SharePoint online site uh, and also with your SharePoint 2016-2019, uh, what you have is the ability to change the themes, the color themes of your sites. Now from the site settings, you go to change the look and then you have your theme option. Now depending on if you're using a team or a communication site, you'll have different options available in here. Nevertheless, when you go to site theme, there will be some built-in themes in there and these are kind of, um, well, let's say they're very tame. They don't seem to show much difference. So. And the important thing is that um, these are being pre-built so that they don't conflict with each other. The colors uh, don't sort of have a black on a dark gray sort of thing. Uh, the only problem is with us where we have users going out with their mobile phones in broad daylight, the white background um, doesn't look good on a sun reflected mobile device screen. So we tend to use where possible sort of darker themes. Now in particular, I've got a, a data academy. This is one of our new channels that's gonna be doing full on online training. And we would like a, a site theme for that. So you've got a red background, for example, and a nice gold look. And that's what I'm gonna be applying. Now to do that, what you do is you go to a website called developer microsoft.com I'll make this nice and simple forward slash fluent UI and when you press enter that will take you into the fluent user interface and, and this is basically a collection of different kind of um, tools and functionality that allows you to build gorgeous looking sort of apps uh, and different design interfaces and branding that you can use in Microsoft but also across all the other things like your you know apps that you have in Mac uh, on your iPhone Android and so on so it's a really lovely uh, set of tools all we need from here and I'll put a link directly to it is the styles uh, for web design. So we're going to do a web design sort of color themes. We're going to sort of choose our own styles. Okay, so there'll be lots of different things we can do from here. We can change all kinds of lovely things. What we want to do is go straight into this page and click theme designer. Now, you may have uh, come across something called Fabric UI or you might have seen some videos on YouTube about the Fabric UI. This is the replacement. Uh, and the code is similar. It's a little bit uh, smaller in size, but most importantly, the theme that you're looking at is so much better to work with. It's so much more um, visual in terms of what you see when you're finished. So I'm gonna look, you've got these three color schemes here that you pick to start with. You've got your primary color, you've got your text color, and your background color. So when you pick these at random, so pick a nice primary red. There you go, make it dark red. I'm gonna do my text color to be a white so that you can't see it. And then my background color will be sort of a dark, there we go, very dark red. Now, when you pick your themes, this is all good, but if you look further down here, 
very important you've got this accessible pairs and the idea is you've got these different numbers that show you um, how good those colors work together so the trick is you need these numbers to be 4.5 or higher okay if they're lower than that then you're going to get a warning that your color schemes you've picked are actually conflicting they won't work together very well so I'm going to sort of change but if I look here it says the primary color on background color so these red here and that dark red there it's not liking it so I'm going to change the primary color to something a little bit brighter there we go and as soon as I do that 6.3 if I drop that down ever so slightly can you see as soon as I get to below the 4.5 then I start getting that sort of conflict so the first thing is is to pick um, clear what color schemes you want let's pick my plain gold and I'm going to brighten the red just a fraction there we go not too bright so once you've done the three color schemes you can go a little bit further and this will be a bit of a play with a high blink here you can see two things one uh, if I hover over it it does change color so there's got to be a, a color scheme somewhere that makes that sort of brighten it's not quite clear if anyone was visually impaired that color might not be enough and might want it to be a little bit more obvious and the same with the control buttons um, and the same thing with these icons here so I might want to change the color themes into some of these other areas now to do that I'm going to scroll down and you can see below there is this theme slots and these respond to the primary which is that column there you've then got the text color which is that column there and the variances to the background color which is that block there and these are just going to give you some further sort of variances to different elements inside the page or the site so let's start with and again this is trial and error so if I click on one of these like the uh, theme dark and just change that doesn't look like there's much going on there until I hover and you can see that it's actually changed the hover of the controls there okay if I change the theme primary let's make that green let's really make that stand out that is the main color of my controls my hyperlinks etc so if I hover over them now I've got the yellow pop-up and the green there okay so it is trial and error having to play around with these and you'll get to sort of witness uh, more of these as you go along so don't worry about what these do the best thing to do is to say like okay, I want an impact change on the hyperlinks maybe that sort of golden plain chrome is not clear enough I'd like to make that a little bit deeper so I'll pick um, what would be the appropriate one there theme darker let's make that uh, sort of royally blue so I'm gonna hover over there so that theme darker was the hover high over the hyperlink the theme primary was the hyperlink itself and evidence of the other controls there so it's just a case of playing around with this until you get it right now if you do make a boo-boo of any of those columns of colors you can reset them just by going back to its main one so for the primary colors the first column here I could just go in here click and just tweak it a little bit and you'll see that as I tweak it it resets all of the colors so that they do have a natural blend and they don't conflict okay so if you make a boo-boo you can just go back to those three but the the goal rule then is that you set these three first if you do want to further the, uh, customize then you go back into these columns and play okay so that's how my site is going to look I've got the highlighter there going in blue on the controls it goes in green it's just purely a demo it's very ugly but it will do so what I'll do now is I go to the top right corner and I click export theme and what I do is it'll bring up a panel with the code that you need to save that theme and apply it to SharePoint and you can do that in several ways you've got the code window here you can apply it through this code directly that's quite good if you want to dynamically store the code somewhere and then just apply it turn it on and off as much as you need you've got it in JSON as well which is just a plows apply you can actually apply it through things like uh, power automate and um, power apps you can do it that way as well as a kind of a good interface control now the simplest way to get it in there into SharePoint is to use it in PowerShell okay so I'm gonna take all the code in there I'm gonna do a control a so I've selected everything in there and that code is what's going to make it look like that when I'm finished so I'm going to 
copy that code. It does have a button that says export to code pen. We don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is just select all of that code in that box there. Control A would do good. And then Control C or copy whatever method you want to copy that. Okay, now our next job is to apply that using PowerShell. Now, it's up to you, but what you can do as well is you can actually apply um, your color scheme into a notepad file. And this is a good way of just keeping lots and lots of different themes in case you want to apply them, turn them on and off as much as you like. So inside this uh, window you see here, this is actually the zip file that I'll provide to you with all of the things that you can use to apply this. There's two PowerShell scripts all ready to go. And you've got to demo, very ugly demo theme colors that you can try out and use. So what we need to do is we need to open up this add SP theme and allow us to add the theme into SharePoint. To do that, we need to open up PowerShell. So the first thing is to go into Windows and type it. If you're new to PowerShell, if you're not familiar with it, use the Windows PowerShell ISC. It allows you to see the code and that's exactly what we need. We need to see the code and we need to just copy and paste our theme into it before we actually apply it. So there's the Windows PowerShell IC. Most important, we need to right click that and run as administrator, otherwise this is not gonna work. You need, as is why I said, you need to be admin rights to do all this. Okay, just gonna confirm opening up with admin. And once it's opened, I'm now gonna go in and open the file. Now you might see a blank tab appear, you might not see a blank tab appear. Ignore, doesn't matter. What we need you to do is go into File Menu and Open, and open wherever you have placed it, wherever it's stored. So I'm going to open the Add SP theme. After that, everything you need is shown here step by step. So I'm going to actually read out the steps as they are. So it says there, number one, replace the name with the theme name you want for the SharePoint theme color. So in this case, the theme that I picked is going to read for our Data Academy site, it's like a red site. So I'm going to put in there Data Academy. There we go. And then it says number two, paste the PowerShell code from the theme designer uh, after the equal sign. So I'm going to click after the equal sign and I'm going to paste that code. There it is. What was next? Step three, click file, save to save changes. You don't have to do that, but it comes in handy in case for some reason the PowerShell just shuts down, shows you how to do all that again from scratch. Now it says click on the line below and press F8. Now this is what allows me to remotely connect to the Office 365 Azure etc and be able to sort of uh, do this. If you don't click that F8 on that line there, it's not going to work. It will say you don't have sufficient execution rights. So I'm just going to press F8. There we go. And last thing is, is either press the play button in the PowerShell IC to all bar above or press F5. They both do the same thing. So you can press the play button at the top there or as it says F5. So I'm going to press play. It's told me that I, I've already got the SharePoint Online module that it needs already installed. This actually installs all of the information it needs to connect to Microsoft 365. Uh, if you don't have it installed, it will install it for you automatically. And then it will ask you to log in. So you log in with the admin account that you use for SharePoint admin rights. And it says your fluent UI theme, Data Academy, is now added to SharePoint. Go to a website and change the look. So I'm going to minimize PowerShell. Go back to that site. And don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to press F5. Um, just to be thorough. I like to be thorough. And now when it comes up, after six hours, I'm just going to bring up the SharePoint settings. There it is. Change the look. Go to theme. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that just great? So I'm going to just show that it works and give it a click. Look at that. <laughs> Save it. And now I want to see if those hyperlinks work. So you've got go away settings. Um, there it is. There's the green one. Comes up in green. You can see that there. Let's go to a page. Let's go to that page there. See how it looks. There we go. So. It's not the greatest color scheme in the world, but what you've seen there is effectively you can actually change uh, not just the three colors that you saw, you can really blend and make that theme work to, to meet your needs.
Check out the other videos in my channel. Hopefully you'll find something uh, that can be of use to you. If you need anything in particular explained or problem solved, contact me on Facebook, Twitter or LinkedIn and I'll look at your requests and respond as best I can. Click the YouTube subscribe button so you are notified of any new videos that will come up in the future. Otherwise, stay safe and have fun.